So that it's both you know, survival and resistance. Lieutenant Baumgartner, Baumgartner, did you have any concerns with providing the SEER uh, techniques to the uh, interrogators? Uh, no, sir, I did not. Did you know what they were going to use them for the purpose? I knew we provided information on uh, uh, resistance uh, or interrogation techniques that uh, they were somebody way above my pay grade was going to make a decision what was appropriate was was inappropriate we were never part of those discussions uh, mr. Schiffer did you have any uh, legal opinion at the time uh, that uh, uh, this request was made for uh, the kind of information uh, by mr. Haynes that uh, uh, went beyond the the studies and the uh, research information on on techniques I didn't, Senator. I, I, my, my sole effort, as I recall, was to merely find out what information was out there. And nobody asked you what your opinion was uh, under the uh, Uniform Military Code or uh, Geneva Convention or any other uh, uh, base for uh, uh, providing against torture? Correct. And I don't remember ever being part of any discussion of specific techniques. Well, um, but did you did you wonder in your own mind uh, whether this information being passed on uh, might uh, be a, not might not be in compliance with uh, such uh, laws? Honestly, Senator, I don't recall having that concern at the time. But again, some of the techniques, and I think it was mentioned here, are, are relatively benign techniques. They're they're effective interrogation techniques. Some don't work, and, and maybe people are going to look at them and say, let's, let's not use these. Mm -hmm. But the, the Colonel mentioned good cop, bad cop. I mean, that, that's been around for, for, for centuries. And um, again, water, my, my waterboard, Waterboarding is not in that category. Is that accurate to say? Yes. I never heard of waterboarding until I think I retired from the department and found that it had been used. I, I, I did not at any time. Um, participate in any discussion of specific harsh techniques. Well, I think that's that's everything that I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Pryor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have just a few questions for uh, Lieutenant Colonel Baumgartner, and that is <clears throat> just for clarification. I know you've been asked about this in different contexts, but just for clarification in my mind, uh, did the Joint Personnel Recovery Agency ever advocate using the SEER techniques in an offensive manner against detainees? Uh, no, Senator, we did not. Uh, what we did was we provided the information asked by higher headquarters on exploitation, which, because of the nature of our training, we have experts in exploitation. We have folks that have studied interrogation and interview techniques, and we offered up what information we had. And would you today recommend these techniques with detainees? I'm really not qualified to answer that, Senator. I mean, what, what we do as an administration uh, in questioning uh, detainees is uh, something that's got to be discussed by legal counsel and administration officials far above my pay grade. And where did the uh, techniques that you all do in your SEER training, uh, where did those techniques originate? So those originated uh, through uh, studying lessons learned of past conflicts and how our folks have been uh, held by an adversary. So, for example, World War II, Vietnam, Korea. World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, the Cold War, um, uh, the Iranian hostage crisis, for example. We even study other detention situations, uh, civilian detention situations that uh, have 
uh, lessons that may give us for our training. So in your mind, since other nations or, or entities are using those against U.S. forces, does that justify our use uh, of these techniques? And sir, I, I, once again, I'm not qualified to, to render an opinion on that. I, I'm, not, I'm not a legal expert. But do you have a personal opinion on it? Uh, I have a personal opinion that uh, a country needs to sit down and decide that ahead of time before you, you launch. I know you mentioned the legal opinion, but isn't there also a moral dimension to this as well? Uh, we certainly uh, go to great lengths uh, in our training to look at the moral ethical uh, considerations behind how we treat our students and how the training is structured so they get the best, uh, best learning out of it. Now, in a detention situation, uh, that's, once again, that's not, that's not my uh, realm of expertise. Is it your understanding that some of the techniques that you use in the SEER training uh, do violate the Army Field Manual, U.S. law, and the Geneva Conventions? One, sir, I don't, I don't, I don't think we conduct training that's going to violate U.S. law. Uh, and but, two, but, I'm not going to uh, torture students. No, I understand that, but I mean you're simulating techniques that may be used against them. We're trying to create in that student's mind an environment, a hostile environment, where they have to practice, uh, like Dr. Grissa said, the strategies that they're offered in training before they get the opportunity to practice it uh, for real, in the, in, in, both in training and then downstream if they happen to be taken captive. But some of the activities you're trying to simulate would violate the Army Field Manual. We, we are simulating an enemy that is not complying with the Geneva Conventions. That's right. true. And um, did you get the impression at your tenure there that, um, that when did you find out that, they, that someone somewhere was trying to take the, what you all are doing in the SEER program and actually use it offensively uh, with detainees? When, when did you discover that? Uh, sir, the the request to the information, like Dr. Grissick said, it wasn't for training. Therefore, it had to be uh, for our decision makers to make a decision on what the department or what the government was going to use in terms of techniques. Yeah, what I'm asking is, did you did you know about it? Did you know at the time when you were providing information that someone somewhere was working on a new policy? on how we were going to treat detainees. I didn't know that for a fact, Senator, but like I said, I had an idea that they were probably going to look at, uh, as a matter of policy, what was appropriate for the U.S. to use. Did, did you all ever offer any opinion about what you felt would or would not be appropriate? No, Senator. We were not part of that decision-making process at all. So in other words, your testimony is you just provided the information? We provided the information, and then after that, we were not in that loop anymore. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Senator Pryor. Uh, Senator Reed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Colonel Baumgartner, uh, did anyone outside the Department of Defense ever ask you for the information that you sent to the General Counsel's Office, uh, which is a list of physical pressures and the memo from Dr. Orgrisek? Uh We had a support request from, like I said, the DIA. We also had a support request from another agency that uh, I think... What is, what's the other agency? Uh, I think that discussion might go into classified, sir. Did you send those, uh, the information? Yes, sir, we did. Thank you. Uh, I just want to follow up on the line of questioning uh, very briefly that Senator Pryor, uh, in your response, confirmed my experience after 12 years in the Army, which is the basic premise of SEER training is that our enemies will not follow the Geneva Convention, some of them, that they will not follow any rules of international conduct. And I just ask you, I'll start with you, uh, the Colonel, uh, if that's the premise, that all of these techniques are per se violative of the Geneva Convention or certainly if they're without some modifications or some sort of uh, changes, what was the logic of trying to incorporate them in our interrogation practices? Colonel, do you have any thoughts? I'm really not qualified to answer that, sir. I mean, uh we received a request for information from the Office of the General Counsel. 
We had that information based on our training, based on the uh, research of doing conducting this training for 53 years. And so we provided the information. Well, After that point, it's, it's, it's not up to Dan Baumgartner what they do with it. No, but sir.